Welcome back to week 16 of Sip the Tatter Presents Raven Roundup. I'm Coach Evans, and I'm coming to you on a Monday night, of all things. Uh, fortunate to be coming on a Monday night because I'll be traveling the rest of the week. So I'm going to try to get you your films out tonight. Uh, obviously, because Christmas is coming up, a Merry Christmas to you guys. A Happy New Year to you guys also. Um, today's video, what well, this first video simply <laughs> is don't go back to the well against the Ravens. <laughs> and we're going to talk about that book we played at, at uh, Cleveland Herders Week in Week 4 and show you how it didn't work this time. Uh, if you're first time here, make sure you uh, subscribe, uh, hit the like button, comment. I'll get back with you. I'll be in the comment section heavy on this uh, little hiatus we own. So, um, you know, make sure you get in the comment section if you want to talk a little ball and, and I'm there. Um, big news coming out of camp today is Lamar and some other guys won't play. But it's okay. I still think we got enough guys playing that can beat the Steelers and, um, you know, make this Sunday enjoyable for me personally. <laughs> but without further ado, let's get into the film and uh, see how we stop that buck sweep or whatever terminology they decided to call it in Cleveland. So what I'm going to do first is show you the two plays from week four that they gashed us on. So let's go. Let's go with that. Start with that. So here's the first one. I think Chubb got like 17 yards on it. And you got, they got the two tight ends and they got these two guys pulling. Same play. Uh, he went for the, you know, the seal of edge. I don't remember who this is. Maybe Clark. Let's go back and see who this is. That's Clark in there. Peanuts here getting hooked by a tight end. And nobody else is here because this is going to split like the Red Sea with the puller in front of it. Right there. Now nobody's out there to tackle him. We got Earl coming, got other guys coming. He Landry's blocking somebody. It just was a good play. Linebackers weren't fitting. Peanut got blocked. And here it is the, the second time. This is the play Chubb scored on. And if you need to see the video in its entirety, go back to that video on week four and, and you can see it from there. Just toss it to him. You got these two guys pulling, got these two tight ends coming down. You got Bowser outside. Not not Bowser. This, is that, that might be Williams. I can't remember. That might be Williams. You got Peanut overrunning the play. And then you got these guys just, you know, sealing it. He, uh, I can't remember who 23 is. He's going to come down overrun it. So you're going to end up with 23 and Peanut in the same gap. And they're going to have another gap, but then nobody can catch Chubb. There it is right there. He overran it. He's in the same gap as Peanut. Peanut should be in this gap, knocking this in the mouth. He not. Off to the race. 88-yard touchdown. And that was the last time we lost a game. I've been asked, how can people support my channel and help it grow? And after talking to other YouTubers, Patreon.com is the answer. Any amount donated will help build the channel. My goal is to get a telestrator and help explain the ins and outs of the game even more. So go on over to Patreon.com backslash Sip the Tally to support the channel. And there will also be videos for subscribers only in the future. This is Coach Evans, and again, thanks everyone for the support. And head on over to Patreon.com backslash Sip the Tally. My friends, the last time. So... If you, if you can see it on the screen, I noticed it during the game, the lineup. So I tweeted this at 104 Eastern. That's the same dang play they gassed us with. So let's see. It. They're going to try to make it look a little different and motion this guy in. Same thing, though. Two tight ends. You're going to have two guys pulling. Two tight ends going to block down. And they block down. They're trying to get these two guys on the outside. Now, whoever this is, and I can't tell at the moment, Came and tried to set the edge, which helped, which made him them bounce us a little wider. But we still need somebody else to come and scrape across the top. Now we got one of our big guys running down, and luckily Peter stuck his nose in there and got a hole. Peter stuck his nose in there and got a hole. And so they got roughly 10 yards out of it with the holding call, though. That's roughly 10 yards, and we had a holding on that, so it came back. That's way better than the 17 and 88 they got in week four. But again, this play came back. And they see it from the back. Come on, come on, come on. They tried to disguise it a little bit, motion this dude in, this outside tight end in. But it's the same formation. They gonna block down. We mo we move over a little bit, so may I don't know if somebody other than myself recognized it, but I recognized it during the game. Peter's gonna come in here and stick his nose in there, which is rare. He tried to blitz that gap, which 
that really that set the play right there. I didn't notice that. That set the play because he blew this guy up, and then this guy gonna end up holding it when he tried to get back outside. And look, that's Peters being held right there. That's the holding call. But look, you got an edge guy, you got another guy here, and you got whoever this is trying to scrape. But you gotta kind of stay behind the play a little bit. Is that Clark? It look like Clark. Clark's trying to stay behind the play and scrape. And now once he see it get outside, he gotta turn and run. And obviously that, that looks like he's slow, but he gotta do that because he got that cutback lane. And we talked about gap integrity. He gotta hold his gap. Gotta hold his gap. Now this guy has to do a better job of really just taking these two dudes out. Take them out, make them cut back to the middle to this guy. That's what should happen. Luckily, we got the holding call, and that, that came back. Now, again, at 135, which is, what was that, four minutes later? I mean, uh, 30 minutes later, I tweeted they ran it again. Motion the guy in. Instead of tossing it, they're just going to kind of hand it off to him, but it's still same play. We, we noticed it and slide over. Got somebody setting the edge and made him cut back in there. This guy right here is setting the edge. And he went out for some strange reason. He didn't block down. Oh, because we had another guy out there. That's the adjustment. We put another guy out there. So they had two tight ends and an extra guy, which in turn brought us another guy down. So these two guys still blocking down. These two guys still pulling. But bad play design by them because now putting this extra guy out here lets Marlon set this edge. I think that's Marlon. He said he said in the edge shouldn't be inside should be outside, but he made it go inside because he kept that outside shoulder. For, no, bad read by the running back. If, if the running back and the other guy gets out here, it's different. But because he got penetration, that helped. He didn't keep his outside shoulder free, but he got penetration. He didn't wait. He changed the line of scrimmage. The line of scrimmage is the thirty-nine. He makes contact at the forty-one. Which changed his line of scrimmage, which is a big plus. A big plus. And now he got to fit it in there with all the help. And all this help up in there. End up getting two yards. Two yards. So on a play they ran two times in the first game, week four, they got 88 and 17. That's what, 105? Approximately 105? In this game, they got two yards out of it. But keep in mind, they ain't through with it yet. It's another wrinkle on it. It's another wrinkle on it. Let's see this from the back view. So I see these two guys talking. So hopefully by now they know something going on and they slide over. And now what you don't see in us, we got more people in this box right here. Two linebackers and you got basically Clark a linebacker too in this box. Blocks down. He's trying to block down on him. So we got this guy. Marlon's going to set that. Good job of changing that line of scrimmage right there though. I think that's Bowser. Good job of changing the line of scrimmage. Good job of changing the line of scrimmage. Now who comes and cleans up? You can't really tell if, the, if we got gap integrity because it's just a mosh piece of stuff in there. Somebody falls and really whoever that fell helped us out. Because it's just a big old mosh pit of jerseys. Peco on the tackle. Running down the line of scrimmage. The Peco moving from here to all the way over here somewhere. That, that, that guy can, that guy been playing some good ball. Petco's been playing some good ball. Bam, right there. Just come down the line, and when he turned it up, right there. Good job, Petco. Good job. Now, like I said, they still were, were not through with that play. They ran it twice. So, okay, y'all stopped us on the run. Now we're going to get you. Y'all going to overplay it. See this tweet right here? Screen off the book. I don't know what time it was. I guess I cut the time off. But it was, no, it was the same drive. It was like three plays later. Same drive, like three plays later. Bring that guy in, making it look like Buck Sweep again. You're going to get a pull by these two guys over here. But this tackle is going to dip inside and go out here for the screenplay. So let's see. He just couldn't get there. He could not get there. Let's watch it again. This guy, he's trying to get inside of the edge guy. Then go block that, that corner. Everything else is the same. You just help, you, they don't think they have two pullers, do they? Yeah, you do have two pullers. This guy pulling, this guy pulling, fake it to him, and trying to come to the screen over here. Now, had he makes the, if he gets this block, maybe he has a chance. 
Because you got this guy coming downhill, and Peanut looked like he may be blocked by this guy. And whoever this is, is pursuing, I think that's Ferguson. But he didn't get the block. A big time tackle. Well, not tackle, but you get the drill. Marlon played it well, let the cavalry come in. Marlon played it well, didn't let him get up the field. I think he ended up losing yards on this. Yes, they ended up losing like, let's see how many yards they lost. I don't want to tell you nothing wrong. They were on the 33-ish. And ended up on the 37. So they lost four yards on this. But again, off this, this bug sweep look. This bug sweep look. And again, let me show you why they went with these plays off the bug sweep look. Remember this. Just remember this. This is why they went to that. This is week four. 88-yard touchdown. So they figured they knew something we could do. But keep in mind, since this run, we've added Pico, we've added Ward, we've added Fort, we've added Vines, we've added Peters. And our defense has been playing a lot better. All those guys I just named were not there in week four when he got that run. And um, it was just a different defense. Totally different defense. But, um, again, this is your first video of week 16. Um, coming off this big, big victory, you know, with um, this is versus Cleveland, revenge victory, uh, home field throughout the playoffs at M&T. Uh, got a home game, going to finish up with Pittsburgh this week, and I'll be in the building. <laughs> That's a good thing about it. So, um, uh, again, like, comment, subscribe, hit the uh, Patreon, hit the PayPal, hit the Cash Out. If you want to do all that, that's fine. I appreciate you. And um, just know, another tweet that I sent out later on after the game was over with, the letter of the day was L. I think that's pretty funny. I'm not going to play it on here because I don't want it to be uh, demonetized, but check my tweets out. Uh, see what the letter of the day was for the Cleveland Browns. This is Coach Evans. I'm out.